Welcome back. So as promised, uh, I was going to do an invocation video explanation. Basically, lesson one topic, summoning spirits. Okay. So, I'm out here in my little temple. Um, you know, it's really hot, so I don't know how long I'm going to last, but I did want to make a video... <clears throat> and describe some, I guess you could say, finer points. So, let's say you are completely ignorant about magic in general and you don't know the first thing about it. And you don't understand the premise of it. You know, there's probably been 10,000 different descriptions about what magic is and how it works. As you go, you're going to define it for yourself. You're going to come up with your own definition because honestly, it's not something that can really be described um, accurately. Okay, for example, if you are getting ready to call on spirits, what's the first thing you need to know to be successful that I think is the most important? To me, the whole premise of magic works on this. Everything that is created, everything that has life in it, comes from a creative spark. It comes from God, it comes from whatever you want to call it, the source, creation, all those things. So, point being is, if you can get your mind around the fact... That you have this little tiny, be it very small, insignificant almost, spark in you. That is God. Think about it. You cannot exist without that mysterious energy in your body. The fact that we even exist at all is a miracle. So you have to remember, when you're doing these evocations and you're calling forth any kind of spirit, the first thing you need to remember is that you are essentially a reincarnated God. And what I mean by that is, I think in the grand scheme of things, God creates these creations because he wants to experience creation from all angles. So, for example, is a lizard God? Well, no, he's not the creator, but he's the creator experiencing life as that lizard. He's given himself amnesia. And we all have amnesia. We don't remember where we came from. We don't remember our source. We just are suddenly here experiencing this here and now. Now, the reason this is important is if you can actually grasp the fact that you are God, even in the most tiniest way, then you also have to remember that this body, everything you're experiencing here, everything, is eventually going to go away. But the one thing you have to remember, and it's the one thing I always remind myself, is that no matter what happens, no matter what happens, through life, through your undertakings, no matter how bad it gets, there's a little part of you that cannot be destroyed and you cannot die. You will not die. 
There's no such thing as death. It's the reason why our experience is so heavy. It's because we're constantly looking at the clock. Why am I here? How much time do I have left? I want these things. How am I going to accomplish it? I'm nothing. I'm just this piece of meat walking around waiting for my execution date. But that's not true. Not from my experience. The sooner that you understand that you have the same creative spark in you that is in God. Even the Bible says God was created. God created man out of his own image. Take that as you want. But think about that for a minute. We're replicas. And he wants to experience this world in an infinite amount of ways. So you give yourself, you've given yourself amnesia so that you're here again. So that you feel that you have no power and you're just here stuck on this ball of dirt. Spinning around and you're helpless. And that the best you can hope for is to grovel and pray to this creator that he'll somehow make things better. We cannot die. Now, how does this relate? How does this relate to anything in evocation? Invocation, possession, whatever you want to call these experiments. It relates like this. If you call upon an adversarial entity and you actually make contact with that demonic spirit or even angel or whoever, and they attempt in any way, shape, or form to take control of the ritual, take control of you, bully you, intimidate you, scare you to death, whatever tricks they may have, just remember, you are God. Your authority is number one. You know, I follow EA Coetting a lot because I don't think anyone has done evocation or taken it to the level that he probably has. I mean, this man has made it his life, okay? It's it's a fucking sport for him. I mean, this is, this is someone who, just in his own writings, has broke down some serious doors. Meaning, he's contributed to magic and to, to the system in itself in such a way that, you know, um, we all now can take this knowledge and build upon it. And that's all I'm trying to get at here is, you want these entities to give you something. Power, money power to be seductive, the power to be invincible, the power to change someone's mind, the power to heal yourself, most importantly in my book, the power to destroy, which I think is, you know, it's just in my nature. Aries ruled by fire. If someone fucks with me long enough and hard enough, I've got incredible patience. I mean, I give people more fucking slack than they'll ever deserve from any other human being. And I do that because I think everybody has a chance to change. But you know what? If you fuck up and you get me against the wall and I start thinking that you're going to be interrupting my path, where I'm headed, and you make it known, I'm going to fucking destroy you. I'm going to fucking destroy you. And you know what? We don't have a society that's just anymore. People get away with murder, literally. People do whatever the fuck they want. Because the system we live in here, especially in America, we don't believe in punishing anyone for anything. 
You got a fucking guy who rapes someone. And if he has a good lawyer, he can get him off with house arrest for a year. Destroy someone's life and get a slap on the fucking wrist if you got enough money. You think that's just? I don't. I think anyone who's been wronged to that degree deserves to have their life destroyed with the same magnitude. That's just a side note. The most important thing that you have to remember before doing these rights is that you are at the top of the hierarchy. You are number one. Everything else in existence is below you. That's your hierarchy. So when you're looking at the Goetia spirits and you're seeing kings, presidents, dukes, princes, those are just titles given more or less, I think, by the author of the book. Okay. But, you know, amongst demons, I don't really think... And I mean, there is a rank. There are ranks, but they're not... They're not that well defined. I think it's more like, for example, if you have a family, let's take Lucifer, Belial, okay? Lucifer would be like Belial's younger brother. You know, Belial's a little more, I guess you could say, experienced he's been it seems like he's been around a little longer as where lucifer seems like he's kind of the uh the new one to look to you know the examples that these christian stories have set for these demons is inaccurate anyway the whole point of these evocations if you truly want to get to know and have a relationship with the spirit is open yourself up, stop having all these preconceived notions about what they are. Do the fucking ritual. Don't look back. Don't look forward. Number two, most important thing, lust of result. If you do a simple spell of any kind, say it's a love spell, a money spell to make $500, you do your spell, and the next day you're like, where the fuck's my money? <laughs> a couple days go by, where the fuck's my money? A month went by, still no money. Finally you say, Fuck it. I don't care. Moving on. I'm going to go do something else. I'm going to stop worrying about it. Boom. Suddenly you get a check in the mail for a refund for something. Grandma gives you her inheritance. Whatever. The point is this. If you're going to sit around waiting for it to happen, it's not going to happen. As soon as you forget about it, move on. Start taking action towards whatever that goal is. That's when shit starts to happen.